You don't have to buy the furniture for service accommodation, you can lease it. And it's a very tax efficient way of acquiring the furniture. Some landlords can obviously benefit from all the tax advantages. The landlord can offset all of their mortgage interest against the income that the property is achieving. And then the other massive tax break, the owner can earn £50,000 tax free. So we're here in South London and we're about to look inside a rent to serviced accommodation property that is currently being refurbished. So we're going to meet Darren O'Reilly. He is the service accommodation operator. As you can see, it's uh, a work in progress. So painters often put some diluted emulsion paint on the windows just to stop people from being able to see inside. It's just an added layer of security. So this easily, uh, it wipes off. Clearly, there's going to be probably blinds and curtains that are going to go there once it's ready for guests. Hi, Darren. Hi, Kevin. Nice to see you. And you, good, good to see you, you again. Back so down in South is, London. It's in South this London. Is this South time. London. This is not South North London. London, apparently, yeah. Oh. So, okay, so let's see what you're doing with the place. Yes, so this is a uh, management one that's actually come to me through a connection at Progressive as well, just for a bit of networking and, and JVing. Okay, so this is actually uh, an SA management property. Yes. Okay, so we'll come to that in a minute just to explain to everybody the difference between rent to SA and SA management. Before we have that chat, do you want to just uh, show us around? Yeah, I mean, like I say, you know, another couple of days this place will be ready to go, but it's literally getting furnished as we speak. Yeah. So the guys come through, drop the beds off. Today? These are literally being delivered today, yeah. Okay, yeah. So double beds, obviously this will be dressed, we'll be putting a bit of colour in the room, getting a blind on the window, obviously, so it's a nice effect, but we don't think that will go down too well with the guests. <laughs> yeah, so we won't keep it. As you mentioned in the other properties, we put a nice big picture on the wall there. Yeah. And again, no wardrobe, we'll probably just hang one of the sort of hanging rails again. You don't necessarily need to put all of the same furniture in a service accommodation property for guests, because it's not their long-term residence, it's a short term. And so for instance, you don't necessarily have to have chest of drawers and things like that. So you could just put up temporary hanging and that saves space as well. They don't necessarily need a chest of drawers because they've, they've got their suitcase. They might have a bedside table or something like that where they can put stuff in, but just a case of providing enough for the guests to stay for a short period of time. Let's go into one of the other rooms. So this is the larger of the two rooms. Two beds we got dropped off for the minute. We're talking about potentially putting three in, but I wanted to see two in here first to see how it would suit. And we might push them together as a double and potentially have a single in here so it could sleep three people. And ultimately that could be a couple with a, a child or three contractors, you know, if they were happy just to have three single beds in here, it's more than enough space for that. Good news is you've got double plugs that side, you've got plugs on this side, so yeah, you can obviously put the uh, beds wherever you want, you've got more than enough sockets. I'm recognising the same type of furniture, so you're using the same supplier? Yes, it's just good, like I say, these guys, I spoke to them last week and literally, you know, within 48 hours they got the stuff delivered. Do you leave? furniture at all? Bit of both really, Done depending both, on the yeah. cash flow at the time. This one is potentially going to go on to a lease. So yeah, you don't have to buy the furniture for service accommodation, you can lease it. And the way we structure it is you lease it for three years, but after the three years, effectively you own the furniture anyway. But it's a very tax efficient way of acquiring the furniture because all of the finance costs, the lease costs, are offsetable against Profit. You got your sunglasses on for this one, have you? <laughs> it's a bit more yellow in this room. So okay, oh wow, okay. The brand, my colours are grey, yellow, black and white. Rather than just being plain white, obviously just want to make it pop for the purpose of the images. You've painted yellow and then you're literally just cutting out the wallpaper and putting that over the top, so that definitely works. It's going to help with the black marks with people putting their rubber yeah. fingers on white paint. It solves that problem as well. You're it, a genius. It, it's Darren. a clever design. You Thank are you a care. genius. You. And obviously this one benefits from a little bit of outside space as well. Nice little bit of secluded garden. And so. the photos are going to look great, so presumably yeah. you're going to do a little table and chairs throughout here. Compulsory yeah. bottle of yellow tail, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, nice little small bathroom, obviously just needs a shower curtain. We'll put a few plants in here to liven it up a little bit, give it a bit of colour. Proper toilet, not a macerating one. Not a macerating one, yeah, thank no, God. Good. And through into the kitchen. Obviously, excuse the mess for a little bit, but, you know, works in progress. Obviously, we've got a large fridge freezer here, which this is a management one, and I suggested to the landlord that it would be better to take that out because it makes it feel too cramped. Get rid of this large dishwasher, put an undercounter fridge. So that's going to be happening in the next couple of days. And, you know, these sort of guests don't need the large freezer. Probably about a mile down the road, there's a big university hospital, which we'd be looking to make 
maybe get the staff from there, the nurses. Alongside, I mean, we are still London. Literally at the bottom of this road is the bus garage and that easily commutes you into anywhere in London you want to go. It's not someone's home where they're going to be storing a huge amount of food in a freezer. So as long as they've got a small fridge freezer, that's good yeah. enough, right? And then just obviously accessorise microwave kettles, bits and pieces, knives, forks, pots and pans. Okay, so we've sat down to talk about the numbers, but yeah. ultimately you, you said that this is an SA management deal. Um, and so there's a, there's a difference between rent to SA and SA management. The way SA management works is the uh, SA operator charges a management fee to the owner. And let's say, for instance, it's a 20% uh, management fee to the owner and there's £5,000 worth of bookings. That would literally be £1,000 worth of of income for the SA operator and ultimately the SA operator would also pay the online travel agent commission so your booking.com airbnb pay to get the, uh, the cleaning and the laundry done and all of those things from the total revenue and then what's left goes to the owner more often than not that is more money for the owner than if they just let the property out as a single let so it's a win-win situation and how did you actually uh, decide on SA management as opposed to rent to SA, how did that come about? The thing with any sort of business cash flow can be quite a sort of troublesome thing when it's when you get going. These sort of properties with management, there's no real outlay to actually get the property up and running. And the management side of it isn't really any different to a rent to SA, the actual physical day-to-day -day management as an SA unit. Once it's up and running, once it's furnished and <coughs> good to go, yeah. yeah, it's pretty much the same. And that obviously brings a lot of benefits to the landlord, which is what we're all about, creating the win-win situation for them. Some landlords, then can obviously benefit from all the tax advantages that come alongside that and the capital allowances. When the landlord is getting a profit share on the property, then that landlord gets extra tax breaks over and above that of buy to let or HMO. So if the landlord's got a mortgage on the property, the landlord can offset all of their mortgage interest against the income that the property is achieving. Whereas with buy to let and HMO, the government have pulled the plug on that. And then the other massive tax break, as Darren said, is something called capital allowances. On a property like this, I would expect the capital allowance to be in the region of about £50,000. Where capital allowances work is the plant and machinery in the property, the value of all that plant machinery creates a capital allowance. Electrical installation, the switches, the, the boiler, the, the kitchen, the bathroom, all of those things are pieces of plant and machinery that are necessary to conduct a trade inside of a premises. Literally, this property is turning into a trading premises and a trading premises can claim capital allowances. That £50,000 worth of capital allowances means that the owner, out of the money Darren's going to be giving the owner, the owner can earn £50,000 tax-free. You've done your deal analysis and you've used the analyzer from the training. And so do you just want to run us through the, the numbers on this? Definitely. So, I mean, this one, obviously, we've, we've gone through the property we want to try and put five heads in here, if you like. So that's where we're going to maximise the revenue for this one. We would charge a base rate for two people. Obviously, any people above that, we would charge extra. £20 yeah. extra per person yeah. per night. So obviously, if we're going on the basis of 160 if you then add an extra three people on that per night, that's an extra £60. It takes us up to sort of £220 yeah. a night. At 70% at 220 a night, it's going to bring in just shy of 5400 taking into account the cleaning costs and obviously the OTA fees. That would then put a net profit of 3,400. Obviously then we've got to take our management fee off of that, which in that instance would be 800 pounds. And then that would leave give or take two and a half thousand pounds to go to the landlord to do as he please, pay his mortgage, pay the yeah. bills, etc. Sounds like a win-win for everybody there. I was fortunate enough to meet the landlord earlier. He seems, he seems happy enough. And so if you've enjoyed this content in this video, make sure to like and subscribe, hit that notification bell. And if you want to start and scale your own service accommodation business to be doing exactly what Darren is doing, then I've created an ebook. It's a free resource for you that somewhere on this video you can download. And so hopefully that was useful for you. See you on the next one. People think, oh, they, they have a, they're looking and saying, I don't, I don't think he's famous. I don't recognize him. <laughs> <laughs> I've had it a few times. People just staring to see if they, they can recognize who you are.